Today we're going to take you behind the scenes at TDF HQ so you can see how we bring these cars back to life, bring them out of the museums and back on circuit in front of you. And uh, yeah, let's see what all the guys and girls do here. Come on, let's take a look inside and uh, check it out. First things first, the suite. This is where we bring all our clients into to talk about the projects that they're going to do here, whether that be in any of the departments, and start to hash out exactly what we're going to do to get these cars back on track. And in light of that, this is where TDF1 begins. So it's probably the project we're most well known for, might be the reason some of you are here. And this is how the cars start their journey with us. So these are both 2012 Saubers. They've come to us pretty much directly from the team and they come to us stripped. Nothing in them, no engines, no gearboxes, no electronics, absolutely nothing. We strip the cars down to this state, which is just the chassis, and we take them all the way back so that we can crack test and do all the bits we need to do to verify them as a project for us. And it's a great way for us to show clients how we go from how they turn up to us, how we start to prepare them, and then how we move them into the workshop. So this is a bit of the customer journey and uh, we can start to think about how we take them from this to this. So this is a full customer spec TDF1 at the end of its journey, ready to be on track with the owner. This thing is fully specced exactly how we wanted it. It was great to bring his dream to reality with this one. Having spoken about what we do in the suite, obviously this is now the main workshop. This car specifically bringing it to life has been epic with him. He knew exactly what he wanted, being able to join him together with his passion and what we have done with all our designers, all our render work, all our artists to eventually deliver this, which is his dream spec. It's a four cylinder turbo as part of the TDF1 program. 600 horsepower, about 700 kilos, so about the same as uh, as it was in period. Easy to run, and again, anyway, you've seen the program before. This is all about full customization, getting on circuit, getting track time, pushing the boundaries with what you can do as a track car. And as you can see, this one, the wing is slightly the wrong way around because it's ready to go to circuit. But in the next couple of months, once uh, the owner's time frees up a little bit, uh, we're going to be back out on circuit getting miles in with him and teaching him all about what it's like to drive a Formula 1 car. Talking to TDF1, this is the look at the future for TDF1 for us. It's a 2019 racing point, which some of you might have already seen on the socials because it's been out and about a bit in the last, last few months. This is us looking at where we can go with the future of this car. We already look after everything up to the hybrid era, really. So the hybrid era cars are obviously the next way forward. We bought this car. It's the newest car in private ownership. There are some that are owned by some very wealthy people, but they're kept within the teams. We got hold of this directly from the team so that we can look at how we progress the business into the future. We're outside our other unit at the moment, which is why we've had a change of location. Primarily, this car is now uh, just about to head out to Barcelona for F175. They're doing a big display in the center of Barcelona. So if you're at the Grand Prix, you'll have either seen it or are gonna see it, one of the two. The other look for this car, which kind of leads us into the other side of the business down in the workshop is TDF Works. This car is prime for a TDF Works build. Can do multiple engine choices. A lot of people have said chuck a V10 or something noisy in it. Um, because it combines the new cars and the old cars. It's going to be down to the owner and what they do with it next. So uh, if you're in the market for one, come and buy it. And if not, you'll see it out and about uh, this year at various events. This is now moving into the CDF work side of the business. So we've got a big array of cars here at the moment. Uh, we've got a lot more coming in and a lot more that are with their owners. Just to talk you through what we've got here at the moment, it's the Williams FW20. Uh, you're gonna see quite a lot of content on this car. Uh, we've got Shakedown, we've got First Fire Up, we've got all about the builds, everything that TDF Precision have done for that car. It's all gonna be on YouTube, so if you haven't seen it yet, check it out. Hopefully we'll see a lot more of that car in the, the coming months. Jordan 195, uh, this is a Rubens Barrichello car from the 1995 season. This is getting very close now to the end of its build. Uh, we've been working on this for two or three years on and off. The owner kind of was slowed things down a little bit post COVID, but we've been egging to get it back on track and we're now probably only about two or three months away from this being shaken down. So we're another one we can make some noise with this year. But we'll come back to that and speak to Crumbers about what he's up to in a minute. And this is our 1985 Alpha. So this program, kind of like the ultimate barn find, it's been sitting in a barn for 30 plus years, it's not turned a wheel since 1985. It's got quite a unique story about it. And we're just at the point now of everything going back together as sub-assembly. Uh, we've got a lot of design work still to do with precision with regards to new turbos and new intakes and all the stuff that was fabricated or 
very much out of life now that you can't get any more, which we're doing new. And so this car again is probably maybe about six or eight months away from being ready. Yeah, we'll be looking forward to making some noise with this one. Slightly different noise to the V10s, but again, part of the older period. The BAR over here, that's a 2001 Villeneuve car. So quite nice to have two Villeneuve cars in the same, uh, in the same facility. And that car is ready to go back to the engine dyno. So we've been doing some engine work on that car. That car hasn't turned a wheel since 2001. So yeah, excited to get that back on track. You've probably seen Dean before. This is Dean or Crumbs as he's more commonly known. <laughs> and uh, yeah, he's been busy tackling this. So what is it that you're up to at the moment? Uh, so currently going through the whole car uh, sensor wise. Uh, so every sensor has to be calibrated, basically set up to read correctly. Uh, and then convert that into an engineering value that we understand. So I'm currently going through all the sensors on the car, or that are gonna be on the car, calibrating them, making sure they're all reading correctly, uh, and then we'll start getting into gearbox calibration stuff, making sure the shift paddles work, clutches work, all that kind of stuff. This car isn't on the original electronics, so no. this has been a from scratch start, so you've had to been doing everything for all the systems on the car, right? Yeah, yeah, so, you know, it all starts with connecting to the ECU, so you're looking to connect to the ECU and then you can start looking at the sensors and all the all the different variables and seeing that they're all working and then then you move on to another box GCU gearbox control unit the dash uh, everything is basically a, a blank canvas that we have to start from scratch with yeah, it's pretty much never ending uh, but that's part and parcel of running these cars in terms of running one of these which is obviously is a works build for us and is an original V10 compared to running something like the TDF1 uh, what are the main differences or headaches? Big headaches, uh, prep for these ones. Obviously they have to be heated up for a good hour or two and the engines are so sensitive to small changes. So you really have to keep an eye on it. Whereas TDF1, fire it up. As long as you've got oil pressure and everything, it will work. Um, so yeah, there's a lot more monitoring involved on these things. This one's not so bad because we're on our own electronics. It's you know, it's not as in depth as a proper full on F1 would be, but it's still quite a complicated thing to look after. Yeah, I mean, that's part of what makes us tick with all of this stuff is trying to make them work. Uh, it's what keeps us excited about coming back in every day and getting them back on track. Some of them could be a headache, some of them are better than, uh, than we expect them to be and we get lucky. But uh, yeah, the experience of everybody, Dean included, um, is what gets them back on circuit. Next bit, taking you guys behind the wall, TDF Precision. This department is what creates all our components where we reverse engineer everything, uh, manufacturing, prototyping. We do a lot of outsource work here. Uh, so we've got a variety of machines in here. We've got a turning sensor for doing all our lathe work. We've got a mini mill three axis and a VF8. All Haas machines. Uh, they've been with us for a few years now and they, uh, they definitely earn their keep. These guys keep them spinning pretty much all the time. As I say, they're, they're working on our components as well as at the moment we've got some outsourced stuff which I can't show you too much of at the moment. So we'll dive into the design office. Uh, we'll go and speak to Alex and uh, see what he's working on at the moment. Just wanting to see what, what you've got on your desk at the moment and see if there's anything we can talk about. Uh, I can't. I can't share too much <laughs> okay, with, uh, with YouTube what I'm working on right now. What I do is I do the CAD design. So we do everything from the scanning, which allows us to capture the data, which is hard enough in itself. Um, and then to go through the whole design process to produce the parts, work with Simon and Brandon, manufacture, subcon, everything like runs through us and then eventually it comes to you, Joe, and Dean, doesn't it? Having bought it in-house makes it so much easier to go like complicated parts, like these alpha pedals you've got on the desk here. Yeah. Um, being able to talk about them all on site and be able to take them through prototype and quickly do it rather than having to wait you know, yep. 20 weeks for other people to manufacture stuff. We can turn stuff around in seven, 10 days. It's mega. Yeah. Next day prototyping, we can figure out like what's gonna work, what's not gonna work. Drawings happen, machining happens parts get ordered in and then back into like full proper assembly build up. Yeah, car build and we can go and make some noise with them then. Exactly. What for you is the most complicated or difficult bit of what you guys have to do back here? I sort of described it as being behind the wall when we walked through because it's almost like two different worlds. Like yeah. we're busy playing with the toys but you guys are what make the toys go around really. 
a million and one things can go wrong when you go from the screen to the real, real world. So controlling all the variables and making sure the tolerance stack up is right. Um, it's probably the yeah. most stressful aspect. And, and you know, like things do go wrong because we're designing stuff from scratch, but that's why we like prototype. We don't really get too many in the way of mistakes, but some of the stuff, like say tolerance and wise, yeah. when you're working with stuff like carbon and things that change when you put them into manufacture, the metallic stuff's not so bad. Yeah. But yeah, some of the other uh, materials can be more difficult, right? I think we do a pretty good job of it. Yeah, so. yeah absolutely. Right, we'll leave you to it. I can open my screens again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's kind of a very quick look. You've seen the workshop, seen precision, seen the other storage unit. We obviously have a few more rooms. We have a clean room and a dirty room and other places that we do a lot more, some offices and, and that kind of stuff. But that's less exciting to look at than race cars. Uh, obviously, you've seen the suite here, which is our client uh, reception area. When the weather's nice like this, it's a bit easier. But one of the key reasons that we're based here is for the circuit. So we're based in Bedford Autodrome. 25, 30 miles from Silverstone. Being able to go straight out of the workshop, we've got a roller door at the back, which allows us to take the car straight out and straight out onto the circuit here. It means we can do correlation from building the cars in the workshop, testing new components, getting out here and shaking down before client handovers, um, which is something I'm lucky enough to be able to do. Uh, obviously we've got a bit of a racing background. Driving these things is always cool, but being able to do it and make sure that the cars are safe, all our components operate as they should do, and do all of that on site before we hand over to a customer is mega. And it's one of the key reasons that we're here. Obviously on a nice day like today, it makes it a bit easier. But yeah, that ability to be able to react quickly. And if the weather is bad, be able to do it in the gaps where we get clear weather, where we don't have to travel for hours to do that, uh, is a really big, really big focal point for us. And for me personally, being behind the wheel of one of these things is uh, it's kind of what you live for, especially when you spend all this time looking at them. It's nice to get them on circuit. Right guys, thanks for coming around and seeing the workshop. Uh, it's a little look behind the scenes of what we're doing here. We've got some cool toys and hopefully you guys like seeing what's going on. The more you engage, the more we can do and the more cool stuff we can bring you. So please like, follow, subscribe, comment, all that cool stuff. And we'll try and take you behind the scenes. We've got events like Barcelona coming up, British Grand Prix. Tell us what you want to see. And we'll go out there and capture it. Uh, for us, it's Friday. We're all going to go home.